Okay, so the <coughs> main thing in double integrals is to <coughs> is to set up the integral. Okay, so sometimes you have to reverse the order of integration. So we'll start with problems. So the first one, for example. <coughs> Okay, so reverse the order of integration. So let's start with the <coughs> simple problem. Reverse the order of integration. And the integral is from minus 2 to 4, from 1 over 2 y squared minus 3 to y plus 1. <coughs> and here you'll have... <coughs> And here you'll have a function, but since we are not, uh, well, apparently I'll go just, I'm, I'm not integrating this, so I'll just write fxy. And this is dx dy. Okay, so this is an exercise in reversing the order of integration. Sometimes we are motivated to reverse the order of integration because that function f is not easily integrable with respect to x, so you try your luck with y, and for that you have to reverse the order of integration. So the rule is always, okay, so let's even write it as the rule is to always sketch the reason, sketch the region. Okay, so th this you can do in double integrals, sometimes <coughs> Sometimes you can manage it in three, three variables. And with this, you get an understanding of what's happening. So the idea is when it comes to n variables, you'll have at least some uh, intuition about what to do. OK, so here, since this is our motivating example, the region is given by curves. So first, x is equal to this and to this, OK? So that's what we will sketch first. So we have the region like this. So let me see, I need a little bit here. X, Y. <coughs> okay, so the region has the curves X equals Y plus one. <coughs> okay, so let me see, it is... <coughs> You see, it's a curve of slope 1, so it will be something like this. But when y is equal to 0, x equals 1. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 1. So it will be something like this. Okay, so this is the curve x equals y plus 1. Okay, and then the other curve is x equals 1 over 2, y squared minus 3. So we generally like to see these things as... Uh, y, okay, so 2x plus 6 equals y square. Okay, so it is uh, something like this. See, let me see where it goes. <coughs> so apparently I need a little bit like this. So it's, it's something like this. Okay, so this is the region. So let me write the points of intersection. Okay, so and next... Okay, so next, find the points of, find the points of intersection. So that's always something going to be useful. So I'll just write the points here. This is 5, 4. This is minus 3. <coughs> and this is minus 1, minus 2, okay? So the re this is the region. Well, not yet, okay? Next, we have to check this one. So in this region, y changes from minus 2 to plus 4, okay? So this is, you see, this is minus 2, and this is plus 4. So now we know that this is the whole region. Here, if you have a different number, for example, if this is 3, then you would cut it somewhere like this, okay? So since these are cooked up easy examples, 
we find these uh, intersection points and then we write them here as an exercise. But in real life, obviously, that's not going to be the case. So you have to check what happens with the green part also. OK, now when we reverse the order of integration, we are going to write this as, OK, let's call this integral. <coughs> OK, so integral in reverse order. So I'll integrate with respect to y first. Okay. Integrating with respect to y means you draw a line parallel to y-axis and check where it intersect, where it enters the region and where it leaves the region. In this case, we have from the figure we have two cases. Okay. So one, okay, so let me erase this. So one case will be something like this. So we move this. But you see, once you pass through this point, this was x equals minus one. So this is minus 1. The, de the description will change. This arrow enters the curve along here and leaves the, enters the region along this curve, leaves the region along this curve. But when you are moving this, once you pass minus 1, the description changes. Okay? Now it enters the region along a different curve and leaves the region along, again, the same curve. Okay? So that's what we <coughs> try to find out. <coughs> so from here, I, I have to find y. Okay, so here you see y is equal to square root plus or minus 2x plus 6. Okay, so I understand that now this part is y equals minus square root. Okay, you see y is negative here, 2x plus 6. And this part is y equals plus square root 2x plus 6, OK? <clears throat> and, OK, so that's our first integral. Let us write this. So my function was something like this, dy dx. I start from minus square root 2x plus 6, go to square root 2x plus 6. Next, I look at x. x changes, you see, from minus 3 to minus 1. Okay, so this part you interpret as for which, re, for which values of x I have this description. Okay, so this is the first part. So I write the second part now. <coughs> okay, so now we enter the region here. Okay, so from here I have to find that y is equal to x minus 1. So arrow enters the region when y is x minus 1, leaves the region along this curve, which is also the same description here, square root 2x plus 6. And this description is valid from here up to here. This is here, x is 5. So from minus 1 to 5, this description is valid. From minus 1 to 5. Okay, so this is... So let me do this. So this is the <coughs> this is the answer. So in the quiz, I'll give you something like this. Okay. So you will not be able to inter integrate f of x y will be something that you cannot integrate with respect to y. So I don't remember this order can be different, but the idea is that. Okay. Here you cannot integrate these with this order, you have to sketch the region, reverse the order of integration, you'll obtain something like this, and it, now it will be trivial to integrate this. Okay, so you have, to, <coughs> you have to understand to go both from here and here. Okay, so this is our warm-up exercise. Now let's do something in uh, three variables. In three variables, the idea is, of course, the same. The difficult part is to draw pictures. And sometimes if you draw the picture a little bit uh, wrong, you get wrong ideas. But you, sh you should follow this algebraically. That's why we are doing all these calculations, OK, to see <coughs> that there is an algebra behind this. Okay, the, This picture helps us. But you see, there is an algebra. If you, 
If you are very confident with yourself, you can do these calculations yourself and set this up, but we don't uh, recommend it. Whenever it is possible, draw the picture. Okay, so let's, this second exercise is from the book again. Find the volume of the tetrahedron. Find the volume of the tetrahedron bounded by the bounded by the planes. Okay, so the planes we have are x plus two y plus z equals two x equals 2y, x equals 0, z equals 0. <coughs> okay, so this is, you see that this is going to bond the surface because it's an oblique uh, plane. This is, a, this is a perpendicular to the xy plane because z coordinate is free. Okay, so it just goes perpendicular to the xy plane along the line x equals 2y. And x equals 0 means that, well, what, the, what does x equals means, 0 means? It means y and z uh, uh, coordinates are free. So this is just the yz plane there. So it bonds it there. And this bonds it from below. Okay? So these, these three <coughs> planes are perpendicular to each other. Yeah, well, in a sense, this one is oblique a little bit. This is perpendicular to this one. And these two are perpendicular. And this is just cutting it like this. So this is going to give the height. We will try to describe, this, describe the region here. And on top of the region, we have height function. The height function is z here. okay? And z will be given in terms of x and y. Our region is in x and y. And that will set up the uh, volume integral. Okay. So again, we'll follow the rule. We try to sketch the region. <coughs> okay, so we first sketch the region. So let's see. So this is x, y, z. Let's do it. Okay, so first we have uh, this line. This. Uh, this is going to be perpendicular. So this is uh, y equals 1 over 2x. Okay. And <coughs> when xy is 0, z is equal to 2. So now I'm looking at this one. So this plane cuts it like this. So I'll do it like this. OK. So. I didn't, uh, OK, so this one is 0, 0, 2. So this one is, when these are 0, y is 1, 0, 1, 0. So this point, I found 1. <coughs> OK, so this is when uh, z is 0. <coughs> this is 1. This point is, I found it's 1, 1 over 2. <coughs> OK, so x equals 2y. OK, so this is going this. The, now the domain is this shaded region in the xy plane. OK. <coughs> so I'm, I'm looking at here. Apparently, I miss. Ah, OK, so this point is found by intersecting this line with the, this line. OK, so this is the line here, x plus 2y equals 2. And so maybe to make everything obvious, OK, so this is the, well, x equals 2y, OK? <coughs> OK, so now everything is clear. I have a height. So let's draw the height like this. Take any point here, OK? You go up, and this is the point. So this is if x, y, if this point is x, y. Now, <coughs> I'm ignoring the z coordinate, because my, the domain of my integration will be x, y plane. And this 
this is going to be height x, y, and z is from here, 2 minus x minus 2y. Okay? If you take a point here, it will hit it here, okay? Because that's why I uh, repeated that this is perpendicular here, the other one is perpendicular here. On, when you st uh, stand here and look up, you only see this plane. Okay, so now that we understand the geometry of this, we can set up the integral. And apparently, well, this is easy, so you can integrate this. So most of these things I, did, I do not integrate by hand, because the important thing for us is to set up the integral. If it is complicated, you just use a computer. Okay, so volume now is equal to, this is my region. Okay, so let's say the first the idea is that the volume is we integrate over the region height. Okay, let's say dA. Okay, so this is the idea. Now, <coughs> here I wrote this in both ways, okay, just as an exercise. First, we integrate. Let us do this as an exercise. Height is uh, 2 minus x minus 2y. Let's integrate with respect to x with respect to y and also exercise. Let us do this with 2 minus x minus 2y dy dx. When we integrate with respect to x, we consider an arrow parallel to x-axis and check where it enters the region. It enters the region when x is equal to 0, okay, because an arrow like this, okay, it enters the region when x is equal to 0, leaves the region here when x is 2y. <coughs> okay, so, and then, this is from 0 to 1. So, <coughs> I think I'm making a mistake here, right? Because if this is, when x is equal to 1, and y is equal to 1 over 2, this one has to be here, right? Hmm? Okay, it's your responsibility. If I, if I write it wrong, <coughs> What do you say? Atas is cool almost, so let's uh, try to improve. <coughs> is, this, is this correct? Okay, intersect this with this one. <coughs> so for x, I'm putting 2y. 4y equals 2, so y is equal to 1 over 2. That's correct. Okay, so this is actually the point 1, 1 over 2, 0. Okay, so when I, when I, uh, consider it, it, it goes up to here. So this is the point 0, 1 over 2, 0. So <coughs> there must be, so this is not up to 1. That's what I'm checking. Okay? You see, that's what the, I, I just told this a minute ago. You can draw these things a little bit different, and it gives you the wrong idea. I should have drawn this like this. So let me do this here. This is x, this is y. This line is x equals 2y, so y equals 1 over 2x, so it goes like this. y equals 1 over 2x. <coughs> the other one is x plus 2y. Okay, when y is uh, 0, <coughs> when y is 0, x equals 2. Okay, so it's something like this. Okay, so you see the slope is negative. Okay, it is here. <coughs> when y is equal to zero. Uh, okay, so this this thing you see is going like this, and it intersects x here. So this is two, and I am interested in. You see, I'm interested in this part. So this is the part that I'm interested in. Okay, so this point is. Uh, 1, 1 over 2. This point is 
0 of 1. Okay, so this is 1 over 2, this is 1, this is 0. Okay, so I don't need this point because this point is, if I had drawn this carefully, this goes and intersects x axis somewhere over here. Okay, so does everyone agree with this? I'll continue with this, remaining all the responsibility to you. Do you take the responsibility? Okay, half of the responsibility. Okay, so let's continue with this. So what did we do? We took an arrow parallel to x-axis. Okay, it intersects the region when x is equal to 0, leaves the region when x is equal to 2y. So I always write this in both ways because instead of <coughs> every time when I look at it, instead of doing a mental calculation, I do the calculation once and just stare at it. Okay, so x equals 2y. And this description is valid between 0 and 1 over 2. So I need another description from 1 over 2 to 2 uh, to 1. A, a line parallel to x-axis enters the region when, y is equal, when uh, x equals 0 leaves the region when, uh, okay, so this was, what was the, this, x plus 2y equals 2. So when x is equal to 2 minus 2y. And height was 2x minus 2y dx dy. Okay, now as an exercise, we reverse the order of integration and let's check what happens. So you see that it would be easier now. Well, easier in the sense that the, we will have only one integral. Okay, now I'm integrating with respect to y. So I consider a line parallel to y-axis. It enters the region when y is equal to 1 over 2x and leaves the region when y is equal to 1 minus x, so 1 over 2x. Okay, so here I solve for y. <coughs> and this description is valid when x is between 0 and 1. Okay, so I can move this like this, and then it makes sense. So this is between 0 and 1. Okay, so now you evaluate this, and you get 1 over 3. So I'll leave the details because you see it is easy. You can, <coughs> you can even in, find the antiderivative in both cases. Okay, any questions? So the next question is now motivated. We want to integrate something which we, an, an integral is given. Okay, we want to integrate it, but we cannot integrate it in this order. So this is three. So evaluate the integral. I give it a name so that I can refer to it later on. From zero to one, from x to one, sine y square dy dx. <coughs> okay, so we don't know an antiderivative for sine y square. If you need this number, well, the usual thing is to use a computer system which cannot evaluate this, but which can approximate this to any degree you want. So you get a number. But if you want an algebraic expression for this, then uh, you try reversing the order of integration. And for this, the rule is uh, first sketch the region. Okay. So that's why. So we don't know. So th this is the question. We don't know an elementary antiderivative with respect to y, of course, of sine y squared. Sine y squared is a continuous function of y, so the theory tells us that uh, it has an antiderivative. Okay? But uh, to know that it has an antiderivative is different than to know the antiderivative in terms of the elementary functions we know. Okay? So we know sines, cosines, trigonometric functions, exponential logarithm, and we know polynomials. Okay? So you think just 
just because we are educated, we have the feeling that we have a huge repertoire of functions, but we don't. These are the only functions we know. And an antiderivative for this cannot be expressed easily in terms of those functions. Okay? So antiderivative of this is a new function whose name is antiderivative of sine y squared. Okay? That doesn't help. So that's why we want to reverse this. And here I mentioned with respect to y, because I know an antiderivative of this with respect to x, right? What is the antiderivative of this with respect to x? No, zero, we throw it away. And I make another guess. Patasus could almost so keep going. Hmm? Yeah, x times x times sine y square plus c. Since we are calculus students, plus c. So an antiderivative of this with respect to any variable other than y exists. We will make use of that. Okay, so that's why I'm mentioning. If we reverse the order, then the first thing would be to find an antiderivative of this with respect to x, which is trivial. Okay. <coughs> so we try. With the integration, it's always trying. Okay. So with, the, with differentiation, there's a rule. Okay. Just like a machine, you take the derivative. But with the integration, you always try. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So professional mathematicians, apart from calculus classes, never integrate in, in front of public, okay? because there is always this risk. So we try to reverse the <coughs> reverse the, or, or rather, let me put it this way: we reverse the order of integration integration and try again. Okay, nothing guarantees that it will work, but <coughs> we do. With the double integrals, it's easy. You can immediately see in your, in your mind what the next step will be, but with triple integrals, uh, with more tuple integrals, you can you can solve your problem at the first stage, but you don't know what it will bring in the next stages. Okay, so that's why we always try. Okay, so for this, we sketch the region first. Okay, so this is our xy plane. <coughs> okay, y starts from y equals x. So this is my y equals x line. So a line parallel to y-axis enters the region along this line. But I know that x will change from 0 to 1, so it will be somewhere here. And <coughs> it leaves the region when y is equal to 1. Well, y is equal to 1 is easy. This is y equals 1. <coughs> and this tells me that this arrow will move from x equals 0 to x equals 1. This is the point 1, 1. So this is 1, this is 0. This point I'll also need, it is also 1. So this is the region. Okay. <coughs> so now, reversing the order of integration, I is going to be, okay, let me give, give myself some space here. I have sine y squared dx dy. Okay, now I consider an arrow parallel to x-axis. It enters the region when x is equal to 0. Leaves the region along this curve where x is equal to y. And this description is valid when I move this arrow between 0 and 1 on the y-axis. 0 and 1. <coughs> okay, so you see, again, this is... Uh, Reversing the order of integration did not reverse these things. Okay. In fact, 0, 1 remained the same. But there, we insist that there is no easy algebraic description of this. You have to visualize, you, you must have a description of the region to reverse the order of integration. Okay, now we continue. You see that this part is easy. I'm now, I will do this part first. So I keep 0 to 1. Here, sine y squared is constant, so why don't I take it outside the integral? Sine y squared. 
I integrate 1 here, which is x, from 0 to y, dy. <coughs> okay, so this, this gives me y from 0 to 1. I have, let me put it this way, which will be easier to see, y squared dy. Okay, so most cooked up, most cooked up uh, examples here rely on getting something like this. In order to integrate this easily in terms of elementary function, you need an extra term here. So the other integration must provide you this extra missing term so that this is doable. Okay, so we can integrate this from our minds because this is going to be cosine y squared up to a constant. If you take the, so let's do this here. This is equal to <coughs> cosine y squared. Okay, if I take the derivative of cosine y squared, I'll get minus and I'll get two. I don't have these here, so maybe I should put minus one over two. Okay, I try again. Derivative of this is two y. One over two gives me y. Derivative of cosine is minus sine, so I get the minus here. Okay, so this is correct. So now I evaluate this from 0 to 1. <coughs> okay, so cosine 0 is 1. So this is again, this is equal to, let's take 1 over 2, 1 minus cosine y. Is it correct? I put cosine 1 here. It is minus. The other one minus minus. Okay. So this is the answer. Let me check if I calculated this. Yeah, this is something around, uh, this is approximately 0 0.23, okay? I like to calculate these things to find out whether it was worth it or not. Yes, please. Which lower side? Yes. So the, <coughs> what, what, do you, what, do you, what is your question about this line? No, but uh, the, we chose this this one by looking at this description. Okay, <coughs> a line. So you see, let me use again this. Uh, this is the description of the region. A line parallel to y-axis enters the region when y is equal to x. Okay, so if I have this arrow now, it enters the region here. So this part it bypasses. Okay, so. We read it from here. Okay, other questions? So these things are easy when someone else is doing it, but you should at home uh, do these things, make lots of errors, and your errors teach you. If you always get the correct thing, you are missing something. And Murphy's rule tells you that if everything looks uh, all right, definitely you are missing something. Okay, so it, it's all experience. You have to, of course, you, you'll make mistakes, but uh, you, you must get used to doing these things. Otherwise, you understand the theory, but you can solve problems. <coughs> okay, so this is uh, one of the typical, expect such a question in the exam. Okay, in, in real life, it doesn't matter. In, in real life, you set up your problems. So probably if you are setting up an integral is sine y squared, you'll immediately set up in this order because in your mind you immediately think of this, oh, it's impossible, let me try this. Okay, but in the exams, in the quizzes, we'll set up a nice integral, then we'll reverse the order where the reverse order is impossible. Okay, so we'll ask it to you and you are expected to sketch the region, reverse the order of integration correctly, and then you'll probably have a trivial integral. Okay, so let's continue with the Oh, how time passes when you are having fun. <clears throat> okay, so another example of this type where uh, in the order uh, it is given, you cannot evaluate the integral, but when we reverse the order of integration, the missing integration term, you see sometimes this is called the integration term because it helps to integrate this. <coughs> when we reverse the order of integration, we'll again catch this. So, okay, let me do it here. So this is uh, evaluate integral 
Where is this? Ah, here it is. Okay, so I again call it I, so that later on I start with I instead of writing the whole thing. So this is from 0 to 1, integral from x to 1, x e, <coughs> e y cube, dy, dx. Okay, so you see again, there is uh, <coughs> no hope of integrating these things. Okay, so we sketch the region. Let me see what the region is. So the region is, again, something like this. <coughs> you see, in fact, it's exactly the same region. So maybe I shouldn't do any calculation. Okay, so it's exactly the same region. as problem three, because this part did not change. So let me write it here, x, y. This is y equals 1. This is y equals x, this part. Okay. <coughs> so we reverse the order of integration. Reverse the order x, e, y, cube, dx, dy. Reversing the order of integration has nothing to do with the function. It only has to do with the description here. Okay? By looking at this description, we had this order of integration. So I can immediately write it here. 0, 1, 0, y. Okay? Because you see, when we, when we were reversing this order of integration, we didn't look at sine y square. We just looked at what we have here and here. Okay? Then we reversed it. So what we are doing is, again, the same thing. We calculate uh, that, well, that was the previous one. Now we want to write it x. <coughs> it enters the region when x is equal to 0, leaves the region when x is equal to y. And this moves between 0 and 1. OK, so now here we can integrate these things. OK, so from 0 to 1, ey square y cube is constant. So I'm integrating x, which is 1 over 2x square. So we immediately see that when this becomes y, I will be able to integrate this. And x is from 0 to y. And I have dy. Okay. So this part will give me 1 over 2 y squared, right? because x is 0 here. So finally, I have a simple example, e y cube y squared. I'll take 1 over 2 out and dy. OK, so now this is going to be the derivative of e to the y cube up to some constant. So let us write it. I have 1 over 2 here. Then I have e to the y cube. If I take the derivative of this, I'll have 3y squared. I don't have 3 here. So I have to kill that 3. Okay. So I kill that 3. This is the antiderivative. And this is from 0 to 1. Okay. So let me see what I <coughs> have here. So this is 1 over 6e minus 1. And this is approximately 0 0.29. OK. Any questions? OK, so the next one is uh, a similar thing, except that this part is not given. A description of this region is given. So it is up to you to start with, the, uh, with any order you want. So let us uh, do that exercise. After you solve several such problems, as a final check of whether you, you are now confident that you will not need to solve any further exercises or not, you should set up an example. Find an example of this form. Okay? Set up an integral where you cannot integrate it in this order, but when you reverse the order of integration, it will be integrable. Okay? 
So then you will appreciate why we have such simple regions, okay? Because uh, if, for example, if this thing was not one, if it was just slightly like this, then at the end you will again get, because if it is something like that, there will be a number, and that number will show up and you'll again end up with something like this. Okay, but this thing, what I say will make sense if you start to uh, cook up an example yourself. Okay, but then you totally understand why, why, what's happening. And in that way, you will not be scared in the exam because you understand how difficult it is to come up with a complicated, complicated and solvable exam. It is always trivial to come up with an example which nobody can solve. That's not, that's not the point. It's also easy to come up with a Mickey Mouse example. That's not the problem. But somewhere in between, it looks challenging, but it is doable. Okay, so that, that's the difficult part. So this one, evaluate the double integral. D, my function is this impossible thing. Okay. DA. So clearly, I will not attempt to use the order DA, DX in this thing, where D is described as the set of all points XY in the plane, such that Y is between 0 and 3, and X is always less than or equal to Y. <laughs> so it's going to be something like this. If you have a little bit more complicated uh, region, then at the end you'll generally end up again with an impossible integral. You'll you'll be able to solve the integral most of the, most uh, of, you'll, you'll be able to solve the integral on most part of the region, but at, there will always be a region where <coughs> this impossibility will pop up. Okay, so first let us see what this region looks like. We are talking about the curve y equals x. So x is here, y is here. So we are talking about y equals x. OK, so and this says <coughs> x is uh, less than or equal to y. So when x is less than or equal to y, is x here or here? Here. Well, that's the, that's the temptation, OK, since, <laughs> since we say x is smaller it has to be lower but okay let's take a point a point here for example say 5 5 okay so take another point here here x coordinate is again 5 but i lowered the y coordinate so this is something less than 5 okay so y x is less than y but it is not below y it has to be above y okay so if you, for example, here, x coordinate is again 5, but now higher than, higher than 5. OK, so <coughs> this region is here. OK, well, since uh, y is positive, I'm not shading this. All this part is uh, x uh, less than y. OK, you see that uh, this. Uh, this function, whatever the, the, the difference between y and x, okay? So let's say y minus x. That's a continuous function, okay? You evaluate anywhere you like, not on this line, around here. You evaluate, say, at this point. Here, x is 5, y is 0, okay? So uh, that function, if, if I like it, look at it as, uh, say, okay, y minus x, then that's negative. So in all this region, it has to be negative. It, will, it is 0 here. Okay? So the only way it is 0 is here, when they are, uh, when they are, when they are equal. Okay? So it all, you only need to calculate the difference only at a very easy point, either on this side or on this side. Then all of the region will satisfy the same thing, because the function you are looking y minus x is continuous. OK, so we are on this side now. And we are only interested when y is between 0 and 3. <coughs> OK, so well, I put 5 here, so it must be something like this. This is 
3. Okay, so, so far everything here is y is between 0, well, here, everything here. But uh, x is also positive, so I don't consider this side. Okay, so looking at all these things. So this is the region. Okay. <coughs> now let's check uh, very quickly. y is between 0 and 3. And x is always uh, positive on this side, but it is also always above y. Okay, so that's how we read. So this, is, this point is going to be important. So that's 3, 3. Okay, so now we want to set up the integral. Of course, we cannot integrate this if we integrate with respect to y first. So we start uh, integrating with respect to x first. Okay. Okay, so I integral e minus y square dx dy. This is because we cannot find an antiderivative with respect to y first. Okay, every time we, I say we cannot find an antiderivative, it's summary of the fact that since, it is, since the function is continuous, always an antiderivative exists, but it's not expressible in terms of simple functions in a reachable manner. Okay, so that's why we do this. Okay, integrate in respect to x, we keep repeating the same rule. You consider an arrow parallel to x-axis. This arrow enters the region when x has the value 0 and travels inside the region, and it leaves the region when x is on this curve, where x is expressed as y. And this description of this arrow is valid when I move this arrow all the way from y equals 0 to y equals 3. 0 to 3. OK, so this is the integral. So this is the part that you are responsible in real life. Now you just type this into a computer program, and it pops up the answer. <coughs> but in a quiz or in an exam, you are supposed to do this by hand. So 0 to 3, I do this part. e to the minus y squared is constant with respect to x. I take it out. I integrate 1, which is just x, from 0 to y, dy. Okay, so this part, 0 to 3, e minus y squared. This is going to give me y dy. Now I can integrate this. Okay, so the integral is basically e to the minus y square <coughs> up to a constant. Okay, if I take the derivative of this, I'll get minus 2y. I only have y, so I have to uh, get rid of minus 2. So I get rid of this by minus 1 over 2. Okay, and I evaluate this from 0 to 3. Okay, so this is, let's do it this way. Okay, so now let me write the <coughs> answer. Bu dört nereden çıktı diyordum çünkü bu soru değil benim sorum. Evet, içinde üçler olan soru. <coughs> okay, so you do this. Uh, <coughs> Uh, for some reason, here I change variable. So let me write the, uh, the answer. This is 1 over 2. Here, when, uh, to get rid of this minus, first I evaluate here. I'll have minus 1 over e to the 9. Now, you don't need a computer to approximate this. This is approximately 1 over 2, right? Because e to the 9 is a huge number. Its reciprocal is negligible unless you are doing some very delicate uh, job. So for all practical everyday life, this is 1 over 2. Okay, so I didn't even calculate that. Hmm? Perfect timing. Let's stop here.